And here we go. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, we find the most interesting individuals just all across the globe, okay? All across the globe. And uh, if you aren't familiar with Beyond the Ball, then I'm going to run down the premise of the show. It's ultimately to focus on stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree and i'm i'm grateful today to have to have our guest um because i think this young lady here definitely will be able to just through her story and just hearing more about her i, I think she'll definitely add a lot of value so uh without further ado i'm gonna welcome today's guest she's a leadership development professional she's a phd student as well as a podcast host please welcome to the beyond the ball podcast miss taylor onion how are we doing taylor doing pretty good no complaints on my end good deal good deal glad to hear it glad to hear it and just taylor take take a little bit of time and just you know introduce yourself to the people who may not be familiar with you because i know i didn't cover everything in those three little snippets for sure those three little snippets are a, are a good way to start um for those of you who don't know me again my name is taylor onion i am currently uh serving as a customer success manager with a company called game plan and Prior to that, spent, gosh, it's got to be at least eight years, maybe more than that now, working in college athletics in a, in a variety of capacities. So um, started off working in event management for athletics, uh, moved into the academic space, into the student athlete enhancement space. Uh, when I was an undergrad, I worked in the development office, worked uh, in sports marketing as well. So when I say, you know, jack of all trades here, I've, I think I've been to just about every single athletics department you know, within the kind of broader space. So been all over the place, um, did my undergraduate uh, degree and, and played volleyball at the University of Illinois. Um, and, you know, like so many seniors got to that second semester senior year and was like, I'm not trying to get a real job. So so I stuck around for another year and a half um, and, and did my master's in sport management in Champaign at Illinois, which is when I was working in events there. So it's it's been all good things. Just recently took the the pivot, uh, stepping away from the college campus, but um, it's it's been great so far. So excited to be here and and excited to chat more about all things. Definitely, de definitely, yeah. So, uh, Taylor, I'm I, so I I want to take us back. I want to take us back because I did a little bit of research on you. Okay, I did a little bit of research, and um, young Taylor Onion, you know, I. I I saw at one point you you actually starred as the cheese grater in your high school production of Beauty and the Beast. Taylor, just just talk about it. Just talk about it. Oh my goodness, you did do some research. That's taking us back to like 2008. I want to say, Jonathan, that's taking us way back. So um, I was I went, I grew up in a farm town. I'm a I'm a farm kid. So I mean, my high school, my graduating class was about 96. Um, and we were unique. I, I say that to, you know, set it up to say that we were unique in that, you know, at a lot of schools, the athletes and the theater or the arts kids are kind of separate crowds. At my high school, the athletes were in chorus, in band, all the above. So I was in chorus, um, I think sophomore year of high school through senior year. And then I joined the band, actually, the marching band my, my senior year. I had played saxophone in junior high, and my friends convinced me to, to come back to it. So I got a few parades and, and field shows under my belt as well. But uh, because of my involvement with chorus, I was also in the school musicals. And so my, I think it was, I think it was sophomore year, we did, um, we did Beauty and the Beast. And I tried out for the part of the wardrobe. Um, and obviously that didn't come to fruition. That was a pretty big part for a sophomore who had just joined the chorus. And so didn't get that, but they said, you know what we actually need is somebody to be a cheese grater in the, uh, you know, be our guest scene and in the kill the beast scene. And so 
I was a cheese grater. One of my good buddies was the, um, she was a whisk and we, my costume actually came like in the set, you know, that they provided the school because the costumes just travel around from school to school. But the whisk was a specialty costume that we actually had to make in one of our other classes. So it was a, I mean, that's like, you know, the staple um, role that, that I feel like I had when I was in high school was the cheese grater in the Beauty and the Beast. That was, that was a good time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what, so what is it like gr growing up, growing up in a farm town? Because j just like you say, you, you grew up in a farm town, but then, you know, see, seeing your resume and seeing how you've also impacted so many college campuses and impacted so many students. So just, just, just talk a little bit about your experience there and how that led up to just some of the work that you're doing now. I think um, there's a lot of lessons that you can learn on the farm that are translatable to other areas of your life. Um, one of those is adaptability. You wake up in the morning, you see what the weather is outside and, and that's kind of how you build your work day, right? You don't know. I mean, now we, we of course have weather predicting apps and things like that, but you know, early on, you don't really know what's coming. So you might wake up and plan to, to go out and, and plant a whole field or several acres or whatever it may be rainstorm hits and you can't really do that. So I think um, adaptability and, and perseverance are two of the probably biggest lesson, life lessons, you know, that I picked up from, from growing up in that environment. Um, for me, I enjoy this space. I love going back home to visit. I'm very proud of everything that my family has built, um, but I never, I don't know if it's gonna hurt my dad for me to say this, but I never had intentions of growing up to be a farmer. And so for me, um, you know, my, my mom worked on a college campus and I think that's really where my love for that space developed is seeing her work in alumni relations and work with the student alumni group and, and eventually become a professor and, and kind of have the opportunity to impact, you know, students of, of all walks of life. Um, and, and so, I, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, from, from farm to college campus and kind of beyond, it's kind of a, a blending, I guess, of, of those two things. So, you know, again, moving from, from the adaptability, the perseverance, moving into my own experience from a college perspective. And then really, I mean, I got into academics and student athlete development be, based on my own experience. And I think kind of what I've seen at each different school that I've worked at is a very different environment, right? The student athletes who are at an FCS school um, are going to be much different from student athletes who are at a power five school or from, you know, um, I'm thinking of when I was at the University of Memphis, the student athletes who are there might be much more local than at the University of Illinois, where there's kids coming from California and, and kind of all over the place. Not that Memphis doesn't also have that diversity, but I think because of the professional experiences that I've had, I've seen kind of a lot of different pockets of uh, life, if you will. And and so for me, I think every experience that I've had has built upon the last, which is, you know, kind of a cool way to think about growth over time. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Taylor. Okay. Uh, yeah, I really, I, I really just like that philosophy and even, even that perspective um, because, you know, coming from that perspective and with that, with that philosophy, you you'll always be able to extract the lessons and then you'll always be able to move forward because you're it, it, it's it's almost like just awareness and just just a, a lot of other stuff just, just mixed in there like like a good like a good dish right so right <laughs> so 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 what is it that what is it that that drives you taylor like like day in day out just just in doing this work that you do because i mean you know, you're, you're, you're constantly pouring out, you're constantly uh, finding areas to lead and to serve. So what, what is it that drives Taylor Onion? That's a fabulous question. And I think, you know, a lot of us who spend time in the leadership development space, it's that question, of, okay, tell me what's your why and what, you know, what gets you out of bed in the morning and those kind of things. Um, it's a it's a tried and true question. And for me, you know, I think I look back and and um, think about my experience growing up, think about my family and what they continue to do on the farm. They are, I mean, quite literally, they they plant and they reap what they sow, right? And I think for me, I, I you know, they're they're kind of my driving, um, you know, support system, and and they, I would say, obviously, they you know are encouraging as well, but they also 
from an internal standpoint, that's what, you know, kind of intrinsically motivates me as well as seeing the success that they've had and, and worked hard for. And when I'm looking at that in my own life, obviously, I've, I'm not a farmer, didn't grow up to be, you know, a farmer. But I think there are some similarities there in the in the fact that, you know, if I'm working with a student or with a team or whatever it may be, there are certain things, you know, that I can plant or instill in them, whether it's confidence or, you know, some kind of a per- personal professional skill, whatever it may be. And then I'm able to kind of see, you know, their, their uh, success down the road. So if I'm catching up with somebody who I worked with four or five years ago, kind of seeing where they're at in life, maybe it's a student, maybe it's an intern who worked for me a while back, you know, um, but I think there's similarities in there where I'm able to, you know, quote unquote plant and then, you know, kind of see what the, what the harvest looks like on the other side, which is maybe a weird way to think about developing people. But if I'm trying to relate it back to, to the farm and, and what I grew up, you know, being around, I think that's a good way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think that's an excellent example. And um, just, you know, j- just, just looking at the way things grow and the way things are planted. Let's talk a little bit about blooming for a second. Taylor. That was a, <laughs> I, ooh, that was a good, I, I believe, that was a good transition. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I, I, I believe my first introduction to you was actually seeing that image of you as the blooming onion. I think that was like my first introduction, but I always wonder what was the story what was the story behind you being the blooming onion? I'm going to take you back now to January 2018, which was January 1st, 2018. You know, it's it's New Year's Day. The Outback Bowl is on TV. And the I can't think of the guy's name at the time, but he had tweeted, you know, and, and got something like 10,000 retweets. Like, I'm going to, you know, if I get this many retweets, can I be the blooming onion mascot at the Outback Bowl? And so I'm like, this, you know, my, literally my last name is Onion. How have I not known, A, that there's a Bloomin' Onion mascot, and B, how how do I get this experience? So, you know, the rest of that year, I spent time tweeting at Outback just kind of randomly. I might, you know, create my own graphics, put stuff together, uh, just trying to be, I mean, you know, sometimes maybe a little too cheesy, but, but it paid off, right? So they eventually launched a Be The Bloom contest Um, And you had to submit, it was either, I think, pictures or videos or whatever to your social media, tag them, and then you'd be entered in the the contest to be the Bloomin' Onion mascot for the third quarter of the 2019 Outback Bowl. And so my my (laughs) year-long saga of tweeting at them. Uh, you know, again, again, paid off. And, and I ended up creating a video, which for a while was pinned uh, to my Twitter page, I might have to, I think I switched it out a while back, but um, submitted that on on Twitter. Um, and, you know, then they reached out, I think, via DMs, and they're like, hey, you, you won our contest. So I went through the top 10 reasons. Um, one of which is that the Outback Bowl is hosted right here in Tampa, I mean, right up the street from where I live. So that seems to be it was just too coincidental. You know, my last name is Onion. It's the Bloomin' Onion mascot. The game is literally moments away from, from where I live. So it all it all came together. Yeah, I, 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 I love that. I love that. And the, the lesson that I'm going to extract here is, is, is just you just showing like when you lock in, uh, you lock in on something in your crosshairs, and then you just make that decision to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it happen. And then you just made it happen. Like you just you just made it happen. The stars aligned, you know, the, the onion aligned, Tampa aligned. Right. And then there you were. All the above. All the yeah. above. It was a good experience. You know what? It was it was um, I mean, January 1st, again, New Year's Day of 2019. Um, it was a beautiful I mean, beautiful weather. If you were a fan of the game that day, you certainly, you know, enjoyed yourself and, and being in Tampa versus somewhere north in the dead of winter. But um, people ask me often what it was like to wear the costume. And the two things that I'll say is one, it was, I was so nervous that I was going to trip, right? Because the, I mean, it sit, it rests on your shoulders and then there's a very small hole where your legs go out at the bottom. And so I'm like, it's kind of hitting me in the middle of my, in the middle of my quads. So if I try to take too big of a step, like I'm going down for sure. Uh, And the other thing is, that the top, the hat, which is supposed to be the, you know, dip, so to speak, for, for the Bloomin' Onion petals, 
is incredibly heavy. And typically the Bloomin' Onion, I think I'm the only woman to date uh, who has served as the Bloomin' Onion. Normally the female is the coconut shrimp. And then there's a guy who does the, he wears the Bloomin' Onion mascot. Um, and I wanna honestly say that that might be partially due to hair because with long, you know, it's kind of pulling side to side uh, because it was so heavy and, and you know, almost fell off a couple of times, but we made it through. I did not trip, which was the success of the day. It was a good time. Yeah, so I think that's one of those um, fun stats that they probably should run at the next <laughs> Outback Bowl to say the only woman <laughs> to ever <laughs> be the right. Bloomin' Onion mascot. Taylor right. Onion, just I might right across the bottom. <laughs> I might need to add that to my socials as well. And I, I, maybe I should get it, you know, maybe I should fact check that first before I put it out there, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. So, so from, you know, the Outback Blooming Onion, now we're going to make another smooth transition to the Blooming Pod, the Bloom Pod. Taylor, what made you say it's time for you to create this, this movement? It was a combination of a couple of things. I think, you know, I've been in the podcast for a while now. There's a lot of good stuff in the space. Um, and and so I'd been toying with the idea and finally just decided, you know, let me reach out to, to some of my friends and say, you know, if I was to host a podcast, what would you want it to be about? Um, and the responses I got were just, just talk to people. Like, let's just hear stories. You know, it doesn't, you don't need to necessarily have a topic, but let's kind of just have these conversations. And so it has evolved, you know, into this space um, where we're we're talking to everyday people who are chasing big dreams. Um, mm -hmm. And my very first guest, uh, I I made a big ask of her on the first episode um, to stay on as a co-host. And so, Jonathan, you know, you've been a guest with us before, where we go through and and do a little bit of conversation with the guest and kind of get their background, their story, and then spend some time, Melissa and I go back, we listen to the interview and and kind of, you know, pull our, our main thoughts and of course share some other shenanigans during that time as well. But I mean, it really started off from a simple conversation. And I think it initially, I thought that it might be helpful um, for my PhD process, honestly, and thought that maybe it would evolve into um, something of a dissertation. That won't be the case. Um, as I'm as I'm inching closer to that process, it's it's not going to be you know dissertation topic. But I will say it has been extremely beneficial to be able to go through and and interview people in that capacity, and just be able to make it conversational. And I'm going to be doing qualitative research, and so I think that you know it's been it's been great practice from that standpoint. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I'm, I'm a firm believer that that podcasting definitely will stretch an individual, um, but also I believe it's it's also a great benefit just for getting to have the conversations further the network and and things like that. So what 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 are you studying? What are you pursuing your your PhD in? It is in higher education administration. That's the focus, um, and then the actual degree is curriculum and instruction. And then how how'd you decide to come to come to that? That's a great question. Uh, I get asked that quite often. I think, you know, the the true academics of the world might be um, embarrassed or upset to hear me say that it's just a competition with myself. Uh, when I finished my uh, my master's degree, I was pretty done with school. You know, I didn't feel like I I needed much else after that. And truly, I mean, in the field that I'm in, master's degree is it's what you need to be able to, you know, excel in the field. PhD, mm -hmm. of course, is a is a bonus in that space, especially if you're in the leadership development space um, or higher education in general, obviously. Um, but for me, I had worked at several different institutions, one of them um, being Memphis. When I was there, the full-time staff, I think there were eight full-time staff members, and I want to say something like five of them were pursuing their PhD. And so just being around those individuals and, and kind of watching them, you know, continue their education while they're also having the ability to impact the student athletes that they were working with was inspiring to me. And it was kind of one of those things where it's like, well, if they can do it, I should be able to do that. Uh, and so fast forward to, to my time at, at USF and the stars kind of just aligned, applied to the program and, and was fortunate enough to be accepted. And now three years later, I'm, I'm getting ready to head into to dissertation mode here pretty quick. Mm. If you were to title this chapter of your life where you are right now, 
what what would you name it? Ooh, what a fantastic question. What a fantastic question. Gosh, I might need some more time on that one. I think the the thing that the word that keeps popping into my head is growth. Um, there's been a lot of in in the last four years, and I'm blocking it right. I'm blocking my life by the places that I've lived and the the places that I've worked. Um, the last four or five years, I think, have been really instrumental in terms of personal and professional growth. Right. I feel like, you know, I kind of settled into um, a space in my career where I have built some confidence and and um, you know, kind of found a, a niche that I enjoyed, um, specifically with, with leadership development and, and student athletes and, um, the college space, you know, being able to help kind of further the mission of college athletic departments is, as you know, has been a big thing in the last four years. And then I also think, you know, in the last four, I personally started a PhD program. I bought a condo and, and I've had, you know, kind of several other life milestones I feel like that have gone on. And so, you know, having the opportunity to simultaneously, you know, kind of develop as a, as an individual human being in that capacity and also develop professionally from the standpoint of, you know, uh, building your network and attending conferences and, and professional development opportunities. Um, it's been cool to, you know, kind of see those things simultaneously happening. Yeah, so something yeah. with growth is the answer. And maybe I got to be cheesy, right? It's got to be maybe something with bloom. <laughs> that's, that's so funny you actually say that because i was just thinking that this whole episode has been so so either vegetable or farmer or seed or just growth themed so i, I think that i think that's pretty dope i think that's pretty dope just the alignment it. just just the alignment of, of of the whole episode um <laughs> so if you if you have the opportunity, Taylor, you have the opportunity to sit down with two people, okay, living or dead. You had the opportunity to sit down with them. You have dinner with them. Just have conversation. Who would those two people be? Gosh, another great question. You're bringing the heavy hitters here at the end, Jonathan. <laughs> you know what? The first um, the first couple of people that popped into, I'm going to, can I give you three? Can I stretch the question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right. The first few people that popped into head, number one, uh, my, my dad's dad, my grandpa on my dad's side who passed away before I was born. Um, but, and you know, it's one of those, it's like a legend thing, right? Where you hear, you hear the stories, you hear what people say, you hear, kind of these, these um, rotating memories like, oh, you know, I remember this, or oh, I remember when, when dad did X, Y, Z, whatever it was. And so I think to have the opportunity to sit down and, and uh, have a conversation with somebody who it's like, I, you know what I mean? It's like, you know them, but you don't, you've never met them mm -hmm. in person, I think would be, would be really, really neat. Um, and, and insightful in some capacity, right? Because that, that kind of a uh, death in the family so early on has an impact for generations. And so I think, you know, having the opportunity to sit down and, and honestly to get his perspective on, on life and, you know, Hey, you've, you've been paying attention the past, however many years. So what have you, what have you seen? What have you noticed? What do you hope for, you know, the future of your family, those kind of things I think would be really interesting. And then the other two that jumped into mind, I'm, I'm a pretty big music geek. Um, and so living would be Stevie Nicks, one of my favorite artists of all time. And, um, on the, on the, uh, beyond side, I'll say would be Tom Petty. Um, and he is my favorite artist of all time. So having the opportunity to just sit down and talk to, you know, either from an individual perspective or talk to them together, I think would be really neat. Obviously, um, you know, Tom Petty is a musician whose career spanned over the course of four decades and really well beyond. It was four decades kind of in the spotlight. And I think a lot of his stuff early on, you know, was kind of battling with with record companies. And and you'll hear that throughout his his album um, and really just his work across, you know, those four decades, which I think is is really neat. He's got a lot of a lot of stuff that I mean, it, it's Tom Petty. So <laughs> obviously there's kind of a uniform feel to what it is. You know, he's the same, same artist from 
from generation to generation. But as you listen, you know, across the way, you kind of hear this development and hear really what's going on, you know, from a personal perspective in his life as you listen to different albums throughout the, the course of his career. And then from Stevie Nicks perspective, um, I mean, really what I would want to talk about is Fleetwood Mac and how in the world they made it through the Rumors album, which is one of the greatest albums of all time. And also, I mean, they were maybe the most conflicted they they have been as people, you know, at the time that they were coming up with that. They had, you know, if it's a group of five, Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham, who is the lead guitarist, they were dating and then they're not dating. And uh, Christine and John McVie were married. And then, you know, she, I think, ran off with one of the, I want to say it was a sound or lighting guy. And then McFleetwood comes into the situation and just everybody's dating everybody. And, and you know, there's obviously in the time that it was in the 70s, some other um, <laughs> extracurricular, you know, activities, a lot of stuff in the uh-huh. in the room that, you know, maybe added to that concoction. And so I think um, that's one of the examples I rely on a lot when we're talking about conflict management within leadership and the fact that they were able to not only tolerate each other enough to sit in the same room and record these songs and this, you know, kind of giant album, you know, a uh, really influential album in the history of, of music. I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say, um, you know, but, but that they in some capacity were able to then come back together and, you know, go on a tour and record more albums after that. So I think I would, it would be interesting to hear her perspective of how that all played out. That was a long answer for, no, <laughs> for a shorter fine. question. That was a long no, one. No, 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 you're fine. It was, I mean, it, it seems like it's a short question, but it's really it, the question has depth. So, so that, that, that's, that's fine. That's fine. So we're, we're about to, we're about to take a little pivot now and uh, we're going to dive into the two minute drill. And uh, just like I told you before, Taylor, and those of you who don't know, the two minute drills where we do some rapid fire questions, we have a little bit of fun. And then we're going to get ready to, to, to let Taylor be on her way. So, Taylor, are you ready? I think so. As ready as I'm going to be. Okay. Here we go. Favorite food? Pizza. What's the last book you read? Oof. The last book that I finished was a Brene Brown book the title of which is currently evading me. And the last book that I started was Abby Wambach's, um, I believe it's called Wolfpack. Okay. Um, What's your go-to streaming show of preference? Lately, it has been The Crown. I will say half The Crown and half Golden Girls, if I just have something on in the background. (laughs) Okay, okay. What's, What's the most underrated cereal? Ooh underrated cereal i was gonna say cinnamon toast crunch um but i don't feel like that's underrated so i'm gonna come back and say pops Mm, okay okay and then what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete one tip that i want to leave for a student athlete take advantage of your resources there's so many things uh as a student athlete that you have at your fingertips including a network right there's a built-in network you got teammates you got peers from other teams you have and administration in whatever building they're in on your specific campus that is there to help you, there to you know empower you and and kind of lift you up to the next level. Take advantage of it because it doesn't that does not exist outside of the college setting. You have to work so much harder to to find those kind of supporters and that kind of support system, you know, outside of of the student athlete experience. Excellent. And then bonus question. Who, who's one guest that you'd like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Ooh, who is one guest I'd like to see you interview? You've had so many good ones on. This this is hard for me to, to say because you've had, I mean, the last chance you folks you've had on, you just had Risa Lovelace on a couple weeks ago. This is a, this is a difficult question. This is a difficult question. You know what I'm going to say? is my co-host from the Bloom Pod, Melissa Lutz, because she is a lovely lady and I would love to see her answers to the two minute drill. She gets kind of nervous when she gets put on the spot like that. And so I, for that reason alone, that's who I would suggest. 
Oh, that's so cruel. Taylor, I have one final question for you. And I see, I see the time. I have one final question though. I just wanted to ask this, but when it's all said and done, how does Taylor Onion want to be remembered? Oh, gosh, again, with the heavy hitters. Um, I think that, you know, I, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day, because you get the question all the time, you know, where do you see yourself in five years? And, and how do you want to feel at the end of your career? And write all these kind of typical interview questions. Um, and I think when I, when I look back at my career to date, and then when I look forward, and then look back at my career today, right? When I'm imagining the the future and and kind of the um, hopefully the impact that I've had, I think the two things that I want are you know to be happy, simply that, um, and that may mean different things in in different times of my life. It definitely means something different now than it meant you know uh, when I was fresh out of college, and I think that continues to evolve along the way. So want to look back and, and be happy um, with, with the work that I've done and really want to know that I have had an impact in some capacity, um, whether that's, you know, with student athletes specifically, whether it's with administration, um, or whether it's on a completely different scale than that. And those, those two things to be happy and, and to know that I have had uh, and I'll go a step further and to say a positive impact, right? Cause you can have an impact and, mm. and it might not be all great. So to, to be happy from a personal standpoint and to to know that I have had a positive impact in the spaces that I have served. Well played, well played. Taylor, please let all the good people know where they can find you and how they connect with you uh, and stay connected with you following the interview. You can find me literally at Tay Onion on pretty much any social media. I'm out there on Twitter and Instagram, uh, on LinkedIn as well. I was just telling Jonathan before we got started that I joined TikTok. Uh, against my better judgment a couple of weeks ago so you can find me there as well at tay onion um and then of course the bloom pod we've we've been on a bit of a, a hiatus uh, i think our last episode was in february of, of 2021 and so we're looking forward to hopefully getting back to it soon but but in the meantime you can catch up on all of our episodes on anywhere you listen to your podcast check us out at the bloom pod on twitter and instagram Excellent. Excellent. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for, you know, the way that you lead. Thank you so much for just all, all that you're you're doing and, you know, the impact that you've made thus far and that you'll continue to make. So so thank you so much for taking time to, to be a guest on Beyond the Ball. Absolutely. Thank you, Jonathan, for reaching out. I really appreciate it. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. To all the ballers out there, you all just heard uh, Miss Taylor Onion. She's doing amazing things. And um, I've always been inspired by her journey, just seeing the way that she's impacted students and the way that she's creating and cultivating change. So be sure to connect with her. Once again, Tay Onion on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. So that's basically all social media platforms. And check out her podcast as well, The Bloom Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And once again, family, if you all have not, I would encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just type in Jonathan Jones Speaks and you can subscribe there. And this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.